take an example such as the absolute value of 2x plus 3 equals 5. Okay? Uh, the idea is we're trying to solve for x and this yellow guy here, when you take the absolute value of the yellow guy, you should get 5. So it makes sense that the yellow guy, 2x plus 3, could be 5. Notice there's no absolute value in this step. So the yellow guy could be 5. Or, what else can you take the absolute value of to get 5? You can take the absolute value of negative 5, right? So if this yellow guy is 5, you have the absolute value of 5 equals 5, which is true. If the yellow guy is negative 5, you have the absolute value of negative 5 equals 5, and that's also true. So those are the two possibilities for this absolute value equation. Okay? And now there's no absolute values. These are just linear equations. So you just get x by itself in each equation. Subtract 3, divide by 2, subtract 3, negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8 here, divide by 2. So those are your two solutions. And if you think about it, it makes sense. If you plug in 1 for x, you get 2 times 1 plus 3 inside, which is 5. And the absolute value of 5 is 5. If you plug in negative 4 for x, you have 2 times negative 4 plus 3 inside. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5 and the absolute value of that is positive 5 as well. This, this example is a little bit harder, but really all you need to know is you need to get this absolute value by itself. And the way to do that is to uh, get rid of the 3 and the negative 2. Okay? So uh, you need to remember this is 3 minus 2 times the absolute value of this. So um, think about it as something like 3, or something like this. 3 minus 2 times y. So y is like this absolute value here. Okay? 3 minus 2y equals negative 9. The first thing you would do is subtract the 3, right? So that's what we're going to do here as well. When you subtract 3 from both sides, you've got negative 2 times the absolute value of x plus 1 equals negative 12. Now you need to get rid of the negative 2, and since it's multiplied by the absolute value, you divide both sides by negative 2. And when you do that, you have the absolute value by itself, and over here you've got positive 6. Okay? So the only difference here is you have to isolate the absolute value first. Now, what's inside the absolute value here could be positive 6 or negative 6. So we can write that. What's inside x plus 1 could be 6, or what's inside could be negative 6. And then you can solve each of those equations by getting x by itself. And you can, you can do that because there's no absolute value. If there's an absolute value, you have to get rid of it somehow. And this is how you do it with an equation. We have one more example that is a little bit tricky, but very easy if you understand it. We're saying the absolute value of this yellow guy equals negative 7. Well, think about that. If x is a number and you take the absolute value of x minus 2, isn't that going to be a positive number? So how can the absolute value of anything equal negative 7? Well, it can't, uh, because if you take the absolute value of negative 7, you get positive 7, right? That's not negative 7. You take the absolute value of positive 7, you also get positive 7. You can never take the absolute value of something and get a negative number. So in this case, there's nothing for x that will make this equation true. So the answer is no solution. It's impossible to take the absolute value of something and get a negative number.